to arise, shine, for the light has come. I minister, Michael Kernan, bringing to you a full gospel Christ teaching ministry, which is committed to the uncompromised word of God, allowing God's people to come out of darkness and into his marvelous light. But first, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you as humbly as we know how, seeking only the nourishment of your word that we, that we might grow thereby that we might grow in stature and knowledge and in the understanding of you, Lord, of you and you alone, Lord. We've turned our back to this life because we know there's no life in it. In Jesus' holy name, I pray. I also pray against hindering, hindering spirits that might try to prohibit the word of God from being effectual, that it can take root, hallelujah, down into the heart, the inner heart of man. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen. Again, the word, the subject is going to be called the Word of God. I'm going to stick with it until God tells me to make it something else. I'm going to be reading again from Philippians. I did uh, actually the week before. I took a week off from taping. All these are pre-recorded quite a bit of, in advance, and I don't know exactly when they're going to be played. But um, I do know this, that uh, I took... I was going to term a, a sabbatical. I took a, I didn't tape that show, and I kind of took a week off. I, I, I read throughout the week some, but, you know, I, and in the last couple of days, I, I, I stopped reading altogether. And now this is Sunday morning. I, I usually tape these Sundays in the morning after service so I can, you know, and I have to drive back and forth, you know, save a little bit of gas there. And um, so this morning, about 5 o'clock or 4 o'clock, I, I don't know when it started, but I started dreaming these really dark dreams. I mean, they were they were vile, and I mean they I mean the devil was just bringing these dreams to me, one right after another. And I'm like, you know, uh, I I don't even want to talk about them, uh, but they were very disturbing. And I'm sitting there just, you know, looking at them, and and and, and I'm I'm in the dreams, and and I'm sitting there thinking, you know, I finally come to myself and realize, what, what, what am I what am I thinking on, and um. So I got, I got up and I prayed and, and the Lord told me, he goes, you got to stay hooked up with me. You know, the devil, the devil knows that he has but a short time and he's not messing around. He's not playing games. And I know this for a fact. I have very little wiggle room to leave, walk, or, you know, just for a little bit to, to, to walk away from God thinking I'm on vacation or something. I, you know what? I can't just go on vacation without God. Hallelujah. And who I'm talking to now is the church of the living God. Those are the ones. Those are the people that I know they can't live without this word for even one week. They can't live without this word. And you got to get your nose in this. Get it out of the world and put it in this Bible. It is life. When you're reading from this Bible, when you're reading from the Holy Bible, you're talking to God Almighty, and he's talking to you. He's telling you about his goodness, about his long-suffering, about his mercy, about, about what he is all about and his love for humanity. And that means you and me, but we got to stay tuned to him because the world is constantly trying to get inside of us, and we can't, we can't let up our guard. I think this is what it's trying to say. We can't let up our guard even for a second. Because you give the devil an inch, he will take your soul. He's not going to take a mile. He's going to take your ever-loving soul. And once he starts tampering with your soul, once he starts getting inside your dreams, once he starts, you know, weaving his little web of, of deception and lies, he, he'll start reeling you in. He'll, start, he'll make you think God don't love you. And you know what? That's not the case. God loves you, and he's always there for you. We're going to start back at Philippians chapter 1. I'm going to start right from the beginning, and I'm going to start reading. And again, as I read, uh, I think I made it up to the 10th verse or so, but I'm just going to start all over again because there's nothing wrong with what I've already read, and I'm going to refresh yours and in my memory. Hallelujah. Philippians 1 and 1, Paul and Timotheus, the servants of Jesus Christ, to all the saints in Christ Jesus, which are at Philippi with the bishops and deacons, 
Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. And you're going to need both God's grace and his peace. Peace is Ephesians 2.14. We're one. Hallelujah. You need that oneness. Grace is 2 Corinthians 12 and 9. His sufficiency, his love, his earnest desire to put him inside of us and to have us walk in newness of life. Number verse 3. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, for you all making request with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he which had begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Now let me touch on six. It says he will perform this good work on you, but we got to stay hooked with him. We can't allow that devil to wiggle in there and cause doubt to creep into our hearts. And that is what he is very good at. The devil is good at deception. The devil is good at lies. We were just reading in both Matthew and uh, chapter 4 and Luke chapter 4. We were reading about how he, Jesus was being temp, tempted by the tempter in the wilderness. If you know Jesus was tempted, you know you're going to be tempted. And what the devil does is tries to sow doubt into your heart. He's trying to sow doubt into your heart. And when he gets doubt in your heart, you're going to start, start doubting Philippians 1 and 6. And you got to hang on to this with everything you're worth. Hallelujah. Being confident of this very thing that he which had begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. We got to hang on. Hallelujah. We got to hang on. And doubt can get in between me and God, my heart and God. When doubt gets sowed into my heart by that devil's lie, it can get in between and cause friction between me and my heavenly father. And that's what he's good at. That Matter of fact, that's the only thing he's good at. Verse 7, even as it is meet for me to think this of you all because I have you in my heart in so much as both in my bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, ye are all partakers of my grace. For God is my record how greatly I long after you all in the bowels of Jesus Christ. And this I pray that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment, that ye may approve things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere and without offense until the day of Jesus Christ. I just shared a testimony I had this morning about some darkness that was creeping into my dreams. And um, I, I wasn't quite close, you know, close as I should have been to God at that point because uh, when I'm strong, hallelujah, when I'm strong in the faith, when I'm not thinking about nothing else, I know when that stuff comes to me, I can say in the name of Jesus and it will go away. But I just sat there. For some reason, I, I, there, was, there was some friction there between me and my heavenly father. And the devil got his little lie started, and I just sat there and watched it. And I, you know what? I, I woke up that morning feeling really, really, you know, I, 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 I realized i got to get over it now. But the reason I told you is because if it happens to you, I want you to know it's nothing strange. It happens to all of us, whether they want to admit it or not. When you're not strong, when you're not following God every single second, the devil can creep in there with his little uh, 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 deceptions, with his little trickeries, and with his little bag of tricks. Let's go. I want to turn, show you what he did with Jesus Christ. I'm, I'm going to turn to uh, Luke 4. If he, if he did it with Jesus, you better believe he's going to try it with you. Luke 4 and 4, and Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being 40 days tempted of the devil, and in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, right there, 
He was trying to cause doubt. Now, he knew, he knew, he knew something or another about what was, what was going on here, but he didn't recognize Jesus. Matter of fact, the Pharisees, everyone didn't recognize Jesus. He was unrecon uh, unrecognizable to the Pharisees and to the Sadducees and to the high priests. Nobody recognized, even the devil, didn't really know who this Jesus guy was. Was he on the up and up? Was he the real thing? And, and so here he is. First thing the devil does, he comes and tries to sow doubt. Listen to this. Command these stones that they be made bread. Could Jesus have done that? You know it. He turned all that, multi, uh, a couple of loaves and fed 5,000 in the wilderness. You know he could have made stones bread. But here's how tricky the devil was. He's trying to command Jesus to, and when the devil commands you to do something, you're being subject to him now. And, and Jesus didn't put up with that. We got to look to the word of God and realize, you know what? When the devil commands something, we got to just rebuke him in the name of Jesus. Like Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. You are an offense unto me. And that's the way we got to live our lives. We can't mess around with that guy. He will take your soul, and he'll get you to the point where not only do you hate God, you'll hate yourself for even being alive. Bad place to be, but he's tricky. He's crafty. You see how he used? I know darn well Jesus could have made those pieces of stone bread. I know he could have, and he could have ate them, and they could have been nutritious to the Lord, our Lord and Savior, but he wasn't playing with the devil. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, Man shall not live by bread only, but by every word of God. And he kept coming. And he kept coming. The devil kept, he didn't give up. He kept coming. He kept coming. He would hit him high, hit him low. One point he was on the, a pinnacle of the temple. You know, and other times he was going to give him all these kingdoms. He, he already owned all the kingdoms. So you got to be careful. You know what? Stay ho hooked to the word of God, and it will stay hooked to you. Hallelujah. It says he will never leave you nor forsake you, and that is true. He's not going nowhere. God's not going nowhere, and our faith in what he has written keeps us one in the spirit, and when something starts to cut in between that oneness, realize, you know what? Good God Almighty, this is happening to me you got to go to God in prayer and say, Lord, you know, how is it between me and you? And God, you know what? I prayed. And he said, you got to stay hooked up. You can't, not even for a second. I'm, I'm too old now to be dabbling with anything. Now, I wasn't out doing anything wrong. Like I was telling my pastor just, just a, a little bit ago, I read all of the book of John and Acts last week. But the last couple days, I slacked off. You know, I, I, I kind of, uh, and then, and you know what? The devil, you know, when you're, not, when you're not reading, when you're not in this book, the devil starts to creep in a little at a time, a little negativity here, a little negativity there. And you know what? Next thing you know, he's got you thinking on his kingdom and not on God's kingdom. And it's a bad place. It won't work. We can't worry about what the world's doing. All the negativity, all the news they got out there is all negative all the time. Because that's what sells to the world. The world wants to hear negative stuff. The children of God want to hear about the goodness of God. Hallelujah. And when you stay hooked to God, that's what you're going to be feeding on. I, I said that a while back. Our diet, our diet needs to be the word of God. When he called Jesus Christ the bread of life, that's what he is. He, we eat this word. We get it on the inside. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and, the, and hearing by the word of God. So we ingest Jesus Christ, and it is life. And when we believe now what God has said, that devil can't get in between that oneness. And we got to stay hooked up to that oneness. Being filled, okay, Philippians 1 and 11. Being filled with the fruits of of righteousness, and you want to know what the fruits of righteousness are, go to Galatians 5, 22 and 23. 
But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering. That means you're putting up with people in spite of who they are and in spite of many times how they're treating you, sometimes right inside the church house. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance against such. There is no law. Why is there no law against this? Because this is who God is in your heart. And you're going to act that out. And when this, the fruit of the Spirit, the attributes of God's heart are sowed inside your heart, you're going to treat others the way you want to be treated, and you, you're going to have a love, loving relationship with God, and you're going to understand when what His Word says is for your best interest. Sometimes we go through trials and tribulations, and it seems like that same trial just keeps circulating around and around. It keeps coming back. Keeps, and you know what? You're not passing that test. you got to get to the point where you're sick and tired of that trial. And you're going to find out when you pass that trial, you go to another level. There's, a, there's another trial. It's okay. We're all going through it. We're all in this together. That's why we have congregations that's why we have, we, uh, uh, Paul said, fail not to assemble yourselves together. We need to edify one another because of the attack, relentless attack of the enemy. And when you go through something, you know what? This morning was very real. I woke up thinking, what in the world was I thinking on? You know what? He, he, started, to, he started to cut in line. He started to get in between me and God and sow discord. And you know what? I just, all I had to do was pray in the name of Jesus, and it was over. But thank you, Jesus. I have the Holy Spirit. And he let me know, Mike, you can't, you can't let that happen. You, you got to stay tuned. You got to stay tuned to me at all times. He, the devil knows he has but a short time, and he's, he's getting anxious now. And you're going to see all over this land, over, all over the city, uh, whatever city you're in, I don't care if you're in the country, I don't care if you're in the suburbs, I don't care if you're in the largest city in, in the world, it doesn't matter. Wherever you're at, he's, he's got shop open, and he's trying to steal your soul. If you're a child of God, otherwise he already has it. Otherwise, he already has it. Being filled with the fruits of righteousness that means we need to be filled with it. Where? To the brim. Right right to the brim, all the way up. Is it, when it says being filled, that means, you know what? There's no part of you that's empty. And this is Paul. He's speaking pretty boldly here. He's speaking expectation for the people of God. When he says filled, he means filled. Understand now, Philippians, the Holy Spirit is speaking through Paul to God's church, which is us, his body, hallelujah, we are the body of Christ, the church, that scripture, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ. You see there, where do we get them? We get them by Jesus. When you see Jesus before Christ, that means the cross. That means the son dispensation. It's been over for going on 2,000 years. That's okay, but you got to go through him. You got to go through the cross, and that is only done by faith and a confession. When you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, you shall be saved. But you know what? G uh, Christ Jesus is the infilling of his Holy Spirit. Now, that's the spirit dispensation, the Holy Spirit dispensation. Dispensation simply means he is doling out, he is giving out his spirit to a lost and dying world that desperately needs his salvation. Hallelujah. It says in the Bible, we have to press. This is a press. You know what? At no time is the devil going to stop pressing against us. So guess what? When we press against him, God said, you will have the victory. He said in his word, let them come. Let them come. Hallelujah. He said in his word, God said in his word, let them come. That was a command to the devil. That means he can't stop us against our will. Our will is God's permit to start this glorious transformation. And anywhere along the line, if you start to feel a stumble, 
You know what? I wasn't out doing bad things. I was in my, I was in my bed sleeping when that came to me. You know what? I, I don't think I was thinking any bad thoughts. But all I got to do is rebuke them in the name of Jesus. And I have the victory over that, uh, uh, over, over what the devil tried to do to me last night. And you can do the same thing. You can, God gave us dominion over him. He, God gave us dominion back over that devil through the new birth. Hallelujah. Just like Adam had before he slipped and fell himself being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ. That's by faith in Jesus Christ, faith in what he did. Our sin in the flesh was placed on that righteous body, and God crucified it. And now we are his body. We are bone of his bone, as Paul said, and flesh of his flesh. We are the body of Christ, which rejects sin. I want you to understand the body of Christ will reject sin in all its forms. Hallelujah. That's why I was so grieved last night. I wasn't lapping that stuff up like a dog thinking, oh, look at Mike. Go. Now I'm going, what is this? This is rubbish. I'm a child of God. What am I looking at? Or, you know, what am I paying attention to? But it was like I was a, a, a third party to this. I, and then after a while, I realized, man, in the name of Jesus, you got to go. Now, hallelujah, I, we got power over that devil, and we got to resist the devil. That's James, say, that's James uh, 4 and 7. Submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. Thank you, Jesus. We got to keep submitting ourselves to God in, in his holiness. Just this morning, I, I heard a person say that, you know, the reason we sin against God is because we're doubting God. When we commit a sin against God, we doubt. We're doubting God. And we don't really love him as much as we thought. That's in uh, John, I believe it is. That's in uh, 1 John 3. 1 John 3 and 6. Whosoever abides in him sins not. Whosoever sins had not seen him, neither known him. That means, you know what? When you mess up, you got to repent. But when you keep doing that same thing over and over, knowing that God don't like this, and you know what? You got to, there's another place that says, the cross of Christ has become of no effect unto you. The cross of Christ has become of no effect unto you. No effect. It has no effect on you. So we, we need to get filled up. I'm back in Philippians 1, and I'm, I'm going to start at 11 again. Being filled, that means there is no part of you that is empty. Being filled with the fruits of righteousness. You'll see that in Galatians 5, 22 and 23, which are by Jesus Christ, the word of God, the, the bread of life. The, the, the Son of God, hallelujah, unto the glory and praise of God. But I would, ye should understand, brethren, the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather to the furtherance of the gospel. Paul went through a lot of stuff. I'm going through a lot of stuff. You know, we, we, we talk about a lot, me and a brother of mine. We go through things that isn't part of uh, anything that I, I ever went through in my life. I've, I, I suffer things sometimes so I can understand how to pull somebody out of this world that's suffering that thing. So I'm a suffering a, a, a trial or an affliction that isn't even really mine. I can't even identify with it until I go through that thing. And when I go through that thing, God shows me how to over, overcome that thing just so I can reach for a weak brother out there, a lost and dying soul out there in the world. But you know what? Paul got to the point where he said, this is our, to, this is our glory to go through these things for the brethren. I would, again, 12, Philippians 1 and 12, but I would, ye should understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me have f fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel, so that my bonds in Christ 
are manifest in all the palace and in all other places. And many of the brethren in the Lord, waxing confident in my bonds, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. So in his particular case, he's talking about he had to walk around with a chain. He was arrested for actually preaching the word of God. And he, had to, he, he spent a lot of time with a chain and uh, uh, walked around under uh, basically house arrest, if I'm not mistaken, some form of uh, uh, arrest. When you walked around with a chain, they, uh, they, they, they knew you were, you were up for a, some form of trial back then. And he's going through all this just so the brethren that didn't have a chain could be bold. I don't exactly know how that, he, that was intended, but I do know that's exactly what was happening in Paul's case. And in my case, when I tell you that I go through trials and tribulations that aren't even a part of my makeup or something that I should be suffering because I know now how to pull a brother or a sister that's lost and dying out there in the world. You're going through some stuff that you might be thinking, why am I going through this? I, you know, I didn't, I, I never took part of this. And you know what? That's okay. God knows. He knows how much you can bear. You're a soldier. You got to go out there now and start reading this word and living this. And, and you know, you're, you, if you are the called according to God's purpose, you're going to go, you're going to find out this Bible Here's how I'm going to say it. You're going to find out this Bible is very real indeed. Everything it says applies to your present situation. It's not uh, 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 some, some antiquated uh, old book that doesn't apply to this day and age. It applies perfectly to right here. Matter of fact, I believe it applies better now than it could have ever at any other time in its history. It just totally breaks down everything I'm going through. And I'm like, wow, look, there it is. And then he'll actually bring me some scriptures. And it, it really comes alive at that point. And many of the brethren in the Lord, you see, they're, they're saved, waxing confident in my bonds, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Some indeed preach Christ of envy and strife, and some also of goodwill. Not everyone, there's a, there's a place in the scripture that says, not everyone that is Israel is of Israel. That means, you know what, just because you call yourself the church doesn't mean you're the church. A lot of people, and you're going to find out, you know, people, they, they, they come in the church house all, uh, all the time, and you know what, you'll, you'll know them. It says in the Bible, you'll know them by their fruit. You'll know the tree by their fruit. What comes out of their mouth is a direct uh, 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 correlation with what's in their heart. And what, what stage of, of walk they are with the Lord themselves. If they're always negative, if they're always pushy, you know what? They, they got some growing to do. But I, I taught this a while back. Mercy rejoices against judgment. My mercy toward those who are unlovely, and there are some right in the church, I'm telling you, they're in there. My mercy toward those that are unlovely rejoices against God's judgment toward me. Hallelujah. Because I'm having mercy. God's reaching for that soul too. I'm reaching for that soul, and they want to think, you know, it's all about them. That's okay. You just, you just live the life you know God wants you to live, and he will richly reward you for it beyond anything you can think or do. Hallelujah. 16. The one preaches Christ of contention, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bonds. They're doing it. They're doing it to basically try to get Paul in bigger trouble. They're doing it. I've seen them do it when I was in the world still. People would mock people like myself, and they would actually mock preachers, whether it be a comedy skit or some other so-called entertainment. You know, they, they, would, they would mock preachers and, and, and make fun of the word of God. I'm, you know what? You know, now, now that I know what side my bread is buttered on, they're, 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 they're really cutting themselves pretty thin. I, I realize this now. But back then, they, 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 they were calling that entertainment. 
And this is what Paul is doing here. He's saying that some of these people are, 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 are trying to hurt me by preaching the gospel. But the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. Paul's not going to be moved. Why? He's got that oneness. Nothing else in Paul's life worked. Nothing else in my life worked but hanging on to the word of God, and that is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The word of God is Jesus Christ, who is now Christ Jesus, wants to give us of his Holy Spirit. I'm in him. He's in me. Thank you, Jesus. That's the spiritual baptism. I'm in him, and he's in me. What then? Notwithstanding in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached, and I, therein do rejoice, yea, and will rejoice. For I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, according to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. For to me to live is Christ, but to die is gain. And, and, and I'll say this coming up here, but I, I'll go ahead and read it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go at 21 again. I'm going down to 20. 23, 24, 21 through 24. They all fit in a row here. For to me to live is Christ, but to die is gain. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I shall choose, I want not. For I am in a strait between two, having a desire to depart and a desire to be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. He's got to the point where he realizes, you know what? This life ain't all it's cracked up to be. But that's okay. Paul went through an awful lot. Paul, he, here's what I think. This is my personal opinion. This isn't necessarily, you know, weigh it, weigh it, weigh it for what it is. It's my opinion. Paul went through a lot because he had some kind of abilities. He spoke five, seven languages. I don't know how many. He, 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 uh, uh, he was a Hebrew of Hebrews. He, he sat under Gamaliel. He was probably as close to a doctor or a doctor as one could be. He knew the law perfectly. He said, in one point, I was blameless. According to the law, I was blameless. And I'm sure he meant it. He, he followed it as close as a man could follow it. And through it all, he come to a place of brokenness, of emptiness. And he never got over the fact Paul never got over, if you read all of his epistles, Paul never got over the fact that he had to leave his brothers. He had to leave his father. He had to leave the Jews behind, the Pharisees. He had to leave everything he knew and held dear in this life behind to chase Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. To follow, to be a follower of Christ in this present life. And I'm sure it weighed on him a lot. I'm, and then, not to mention, he went through, you read about Paul, he went through as much as anyone. And he was saying here, for to me to live is Christ, but to die is gain. No matter what I got to go through, as long as I hang on to Christ, as long as I have communion with the Holy Spirit, there's nothing this world can do to drag me down. And I am so sold out, I am so convinced I'm going the right way that I don't care what man does to me. There's a song like that. I don't, I don't care what man does to me. I don't care what this world thinks. I don't care what the devil does. I don't care, hallelujah, what, 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 what's going, what my circumstances even are. You know what? I got that oneness with God, and I'm going to hang on to that joy. And when I see a little fracture in there now, just a little one, just a little wiggle room for that devil, uh-uh, you got to come out of there. And I got to stay hooked to the spirit of the living God. And there is nothing the devil can do but my own ignorance and my own denial of things that I go. I, I share, I, I'm an open book to you because I happen to know if I'm going through this stuff, if Paul's going through this stuff, you're going to go through this stuff. And you got to just get to the point where I'm, not, I'm done going through stuff. 
You might have to go through some more. That's okay. I, I, I know. I'm 53 now and a half. I'm still going through stuff, but I'm not going through what I used to go through. I'll tell you that. I ain't going back. I can't go back. God's already let me know. You cannot go back. You got to go forward. Now on. Now on. And when you're a child of God, this life is very real indeed. You know, these people that are mocking the church, you know what? It doesn't matter to me one iota what they do. That's, that's their gig. That's fine with me. I'm sold out to Jesus. And having, this is 25, and having this confidence, I know that I shall abide and continue with you, continue with you all for your furtherance and joy of faith, that your rejoicing may be more abundant in Christ Jesus for me by my coming to you again. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. Let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. We can't, we can't have the world's, this world's conversation any longer. We cannot be talking uh, uh, backbiting. We cannot be talking the trash that this, you know, I mean, you, you beat sinners laughing at their own jokes. And they're looking at you like, man, it wasn't that funny. And you're calling yourself a Christian. You know what? It says when the spirit comes out of man and then returns back, finding his house swept and garnished, he's going to bring with him five, uh, seven other spirits worse than himself. You're going to find out that scripture is very real. God is no joke. You'll get to a point where you're going to realize, you know what? This stuff is true and it works. This stuff is no joke. Only let your conversation be as, as it becometh the gospel of Christ. The gospel of Christ is one of holiness, one of purity, one of love. Loving others, hallelujah, the way you would want them to love you. Treating others the way you want to be treated. And then and, and loving God in spite of all the stuff you're going to go through in this life. It says that all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecutions. All that live godly, all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. 2 Timothy 3 and 12. I'm going to read that again. And all that will live godly. That's, that's a life of purity. In Christ Jesus, that's a spiritual baptism. Every, when you are in Christ Jesus, every devil in hell knows it. And you're going to go, well, that's not fair. No, it's, it, God told me just recently it needs to be that way. Believe it or not, they got a work to do. They think they're going to destroy you, but God's going to use that their destruction to strengthen us, to strengthen our resolve in Him. Every time you stumble a little bit, there you got a, you got a pit bull, you got a pit bull clamped on the the, the, the hind quarters. It's going to wake you up in a hurry, whether in dreams or in reality. You know what I'm talking about. If you're a child of God, it seems like. You're damned if you do, and you're damned if you don't. It's not the case. What it is, just keep following Jesus. Just press. Just press. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall. Might? No. Shall. That, that's, that's the most affirmative right there. Shall suffer persecution. It's going to come. It's going to come. And let me go to the scripture right after that. 2 Timothy. But evil men... That's who he used to be. Hallelujah. If you're a child of God, you used to be an evil man. And seducers shall wax worse and worse. Deceiving and being deceived. Deceiving and being deceived. And that is the gospel truth. Hallelujah. That is the gospel truth. That is the gospel of Christ. When I'm reading the word, I cannot be lying. Every now and then, I'll tell you my opinion. But you know what? I also warn you. That's all that was. You know, I, I, I'll now and then, I'll, I'll, I'll throw out a, a phrase, a worldly phrase that I think fits the situation. And I'm always careful to let you know that's, that's not gospel. You cannot, the, 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 the word of God cannot fail. 
positively. It cannot fail. Sometimes I, I use a proverb or something to, uh, uh, or, um, to explain a situation, uh, a worldly occurrence, to explain a spiritual situation. Hallelujah. And, and, the, and the Lord Jesus does the same things. It's no different. But understand, one is flesh and one is spirit. You got to get the, the meat of the word is always in the spirit. You always got to be searching for the spiritual truth of what was said there and not be worried about being entertained with some uh, uh, worthless Bible story that won't edify. You know what? Pro there's nothing wrong with Proverbs or um, 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 uh, that I, there's, there's another word I can't think of right now, but there's nothing wrong with those, obviously, because God used them all the time. Uh, physical occurrences. Hallelujah. But they're all supposed to be turned over by the Holy Ghost to a spiritual circumstance or a spiritual uh, uh, victory, something that we can use against that enemy that's trying to drag, suck the living life right out of us as we stand. But God said, stand anyhow. Don't worry about him. I got the victory over him. You stand for me. And I told, I gave him a command. I said, let them come. And his only job is to sow doubt, sow doubt, sow doubt. He's always trying to sow doubt. And as soon as he can get that doubt, he's got, he's got you on his little hellish little lure and, and hook. In, in, in line, and he's going to start reeling you in, reeling you in. And you're thinking, oh, God, where are you? You know what? He, he hasn't gone nowhere. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He's still there. He's still on the throne, and he's still available right at this present distress, right at this present moment. Hallelujah. Only 27, Philippians 1, 27, only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. And don't deviate. You know, when we're around sinners and they're talking their smack, we, what should we be talking? Huh? If we just happen to be in earshot, what should we be? Should we jump in with both feet in that conversation? Or should we be, uh, 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 let your conversation be as becometh the gospel of Christ. And these are what I would call commandments. If you do this, you will have life. If you don't do this, you're going to have problems in the flesh. You're going to have problems in this life, unspeakable. And the older you get, the narrower the way gets all the time. I found this to be so true. The narrower the road gets all the time. And it, that, that's that straight gate we're looking for. We got no, I got less and less. As I get older, I got less and less wiggle room as compared to my early 20s when every day was just as funny as the next. When I would say, when things unspeakable to me now would come out of my, this, this mouth, out of my heart, which was black as night, which was a stone, which was hardened and, 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 and had no life in it. It was darkness. It was darkness. It was not light. Now it's light. And I should be about the conversation as becomes the gospel of Christ at all times. That whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs that ye stand fast in one spirit with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. Striving together. Doesn't say just hanging out and letting it, letting it loose. Yeah, just hang out. It's all good. No, no, we're striving. It says over and over, it's a press. We're pressing into the gospel. We're pressing into the kingdom. Hallelujah. And the, and the devil's going to do everything he can to stop you from stopping. You know, he, he doesn't want you. And the only, he doesn't want you in because he's not going in. Understand. He's a, I'm, I'm just going to call him what he is, a big baby. He's a big baby. He can't go in, so he doesn't want you going in. There's no way in the world he can stop you. But you're going to have to strive together. Striving by yourself is a lot harder. But thankfully, I got the Holy Spirit, and he can give me heads up on what is going on. I'm like, what just happened there? You got to, Mike, you got to stay hooked up. You can't, you, you, this is, I mean, you got to stay hooked up. So when we strive together for the faith of the gospel, we're striving together. We're one spirit, 
we're one mind, we're one body, we're one baptism, we're, you know what, we're going to serve one God in the glory forever and ever, for eternity, hallelujah. Matter of fact, if you're in him and he's in you, you're technically in eternity now. This body's still in time, but thank you, Jesus, Christ can never die. When I'm in him and he's in me, Christ is in eternity. I am one with the spirit of the living God. And I know exactly what pleases my heavenly father. Reading this word and then living it. Read it like it is. Live it like it is. You're going to get where he is in the here and in the now. I wouldn't have made it. I wouldn't have made it if I would have stayed like my old man. I was not long for this world. I was, I was going to self-destruct. I know it. And in nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evil evident, excuse me, which to them is an evident token of perdition, but to you of salvation and that of God. For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sakes, having the same conflict which he saw in me and now here to be in me. I'm going back to 29. Important. Important. You know what? It's important. For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ not only to believe on him, that's our part. That's our part. We got to believe. No matter what the devil does, no matter what the world says, you know, they're, 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 right now, some, there's some, I'm, I'm sure there's some archaeological dig going on trying to find the body of, of Jesus. And, and, and the Bible clearly states it, he is risen. Somewhere, I mean, I, it, it, it just never, it never ceases to amaze me. They're still looking. And once they find it, it's going to be the greatest find ever found and all this other stuff. And you know what? They're not going to find it. It's not there. He is risen. And matter of fact, not only that, my faith tells me, according to the word of God, that I am his body. You are his body. We're bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh, and it rejects sin and all of its cleverness, all of his trickiness. Like I was telling you, the devil tried to trick Jesus. You know he's going to try to trick you. You know he's going to try. You're the body of Christ. He doesn't want you going someplace he can't go. That's just his nature. Understand, the devil and his children, they're only working out their nature. Shouldn't we be about our father's business, working out his nature? He's given us a temple now. It's no longer sinful flesh. It's a temple. And he's put his spirit inside us. The same spirit that's in Jesus is in us. And he's given us, hallelujah, that sacrifice. He didn't hang an excuse on that cross. He hung his ever-loving son, Jesus Christ, on that cross and crucified sin in the flesh. When sin touched Adam, all of mankind fell into sin. But when sin touched the body of Christ, sin was condemned in the flesh. Hallelujah. So when, when sin touched man, man was condemned. When sin touched Christ, sin was condemned. Big difference. And we have that power. We have that gift. And we can use it. We can utilize it to our advantage and not allow that devil to come along and so discord between us and our loving, nurturing father. That's all he wants to do. Is, and, and, and that's all he can, all the devil can sow is confusion. That's all he can sow is confusion. And I am so glad that I am not confused. I'm so glad God didn't leave me the way I was. I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. And when I, a, 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 a breath of a hair comes in between me and him, that is too much. At this point in my life, it is too much. And I know that little serpent, he's going to try to sneak his way in between us and, 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 and start yakking at me, making me think that I'm speaking to God. Uh-uh, uh-uh, that ain't going to happen. I know better. Why do I know the voice of God? Because I, I have his word on it. I know exactly what he tells me is truth. And I have his Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. But unto you, for unto you it is given on the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer 
for his sakes. I, I was explaining that a little earlier. Sometimes we go through things that isn't really part of our makeup. It's not who we are. Why am I suffering this one? I don't even know these people. You know, and I, and I, I you know, you sit there and you wonder and you wonder, and why am I suffering this affliction? You know, what did I do to deserve? And I've said it, in, I've said it in the past, what did I do to deserve this? And I'm just looking around like, man, this is nonsense. I didn't, you know, I got, I, I got nothing in common with this. But you know what? God someday is going to use that affliction. He's going to use that thing. I'm going to have power to reach somebody that's deep in that sin and pull that brother or sister out for whom Christ died. And I'm going to give the glory to God because I know it wasn't me. In your patience, possess ye your souls. In your patience, possess ye your souls. So when we're patient with what God is working out in us, we're going to give him the glory and we're going to horrify the devil. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to horrify that devil because nothing's working. He's, he's grabbing all his little lever, levers of power. And it's all, we're all Teflon. And, and he's all frustrated. And all he can do is snot and sneer. And you know what? That's just too bad. Because he, he's got no place in me anymore. Hallelujah. Philippians 2. If there be, therefore, any consolation in Christ if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. We are one. We're going to the pearly gates, to the, to what they call the marriage supper of the Lamb. We're going through as one. Hallelujah. We're going through as one body the bride of Christ, hallelujah. And God, he's going to escort his family, his bride, into the promised land, hallelujah. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna shine just like God. We're going to look like him, and we're going to have the attributes of his spirit welled up in our heart to the point where, you know what, you won't want to be anywhere else. You're, you don't want to miss that great day, hallelujah. You want to be there. I'm convinced of it. It's going to be so much grander than this life. But thank you, Jesus, for allowing me to be partaker of this glorious uh, uh, conversion. And I'm, I'm glad that God's using me now to, to preach this message to a lost and dying. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I'm not going to back down. No one can tell me this is not what this stuff means because I know better. I've been through the ringer. I've suffered so many things, I can't even keep track of them all. But you know what? It doesn't matter anymore because I'm already there. I'm already risen with my Lord and Savior in spirit, which is the heart of my soul. I'm already there, and he's clothing my once naked, dead soul with his radiant glory. And I'm not going to be found naked. I'm not going to be ashamed. I'm not going to be shamed by that devil like Adam and Eve was in the garden. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory. Vainglory, that means I'm, I'm, I'm saying it's all about me. I'm, I'm preaching me more than I'm preaching Jesus. My ministry, my this, my, 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 my. No, 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 it's not about Mike. I'll tell you that for a fact. I just told you what happened to me this morning. And I, I lay myself out bare before a lost and dying world just to let them know you're not alone. You're not alone. I, I didn't say that, you know what, to, to cause anyone discomfort. But I want you to know, when you go through stuff, and I've heard other famous preachers say the exact same thing. Say that back when I first came to the Lord, say the exact same thing. Let nothing be done through strife. That means I'm, I'm, I'm bumping into you. You know, I'm, I'm like a chicken in the hen yard, you know, walking around with my head bobbing. But, you know, busting, 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 to, and, you know, you don't have to do it physically. You could do this all day long. This is strife, flapping the gums. The, the, the lights, the lights are, uh, the lights are on, but nobody's home. You know what I mean? Ba, 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 ba. You know, I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. Well, see that you don't, because that is your salvation. Don't give them a piece of your mind. Give them a piece of your heart. Hallelujah. Don't give them a piece of your mind, which is supposed to be the mind of Christ. Give them a piece of your heart. 
Tell them about the goodness of God. And, you, and the best way to tell them about the goodness of God is treat them like something. Hallelujah. In spite of who they are. I've actually had people come up to me and ask me what's different about me. And you know what? I was just living the life that I knew I had to live. At work? Yeah. You know, what's different? Good time to testify right there and then. Oh, really? Yeah, well, and you're going to get a different reaction every time. Not all the same, but that's okay. Don't let the devil wear you down because somebody's negative against something they don't understand. You know, they're going to criticize something they have no knowledge of. That's their problem, not yours. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind. Get this, lowliness of mind. Let each esteem other better than themselves. That is a Christian. If you want a sentence, in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. I'm going to seek your promotion. You're going to seek mine. I'm not self-serving. I'm, I'm a servant of all. And wherever God wants me, I will prosper in that position because you know what? I am the blessing. I don't have to pray for a blessing. I am the blessing at that point. I have the goodness of God sowed into my heart, and I know the difference. I had a heart of stone. I mean, I was, I was, I was, I was, I was, I had a, I had a speed pass to, and with no speed bumps on the way to hell. And God pulled me out of that mess, put His put His Son in me, and now He's revealing me to a lost and dying world. And I'm out of time. I got to leave you with. Psalm 19, 12 through 14. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable. In thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Now may the good Lord richly bless all your sincere efforts that you might lead a quiet and peaceful life, that you can go out there with boldness, with confidence, with, with the, the assurance that if, if God be for me, he's more than the whole world against me. In Jesus' name, amen. Please shine